Get ready to witness a game-changing project unlike any other. With 180,000 Chinese workers converging in the middle of the desert, this mega-project is set to alter the landscape of the region and revolutionize the way we look at development. Are you ready for the epic transformation? In today's video, we will delve into the reasons behind this mega-project, the advantages of the reservoir, and the challenges faced during its construction. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be blown away by the sheer scale and ambition of this transformative undertaking that promises to change everything we thought we knew about development and progress. The reservoirs help store water for irrigation and other uses, mitigating the effects of desertification and improving the local water supply. In addition to benefiting agriculture, these projects can also support industrial development, tourism, and other economic activities in the region. China is attempting to make the largest desert reservoir. When it's done, it will be able to water a 900,000 mu area of land, making the desert greener than ever. It will take 40 years to finish the project. 180,000 people are working on building this reservoir. This reservoir is called the Han Iperil because it was built in a desert. Desert reservoirs are rare in China and the rest of the world, so calling it a pearl dot is not too much of an exaggeration. The reservoir can hold 148 million cubic meters of water and be built in 1958. It is also the largest man-made desert reservoir in Asia. It can hold as much water as 10 of Hangzhou, China's West Lakes. Why China would want to build reservoirs in the desert? There is nothing good about living in a desert. For any project in the desert, the cost of labor is high, the project needs a lot of money, and it is not possible to make a profit from it in the near future. A lot of Chinese building projects are in the deserts that cover more than 1,000 kilometers of the country. In desert areas, people have built railways, more than 5,000 kilometers of desert roads, and a lot of photovoltaic power units. China is becoming more and more like a desert at a very fast rate, and the country needs it. Water badly to stop this from happening. China plans to build reservoirs because of this. China's Desert Control Challenge The role of water and reservoirs. For almost a century, China has been undertaking the significant task of desert greening which involves reforesting and revitalizing the desert areas in the country. China is currently leading in the effort to green up its deserts, but the issue of water scarcity remains a significant challenge. To effectively control the spread of the desert, China needs to construct a reservoir to store water, which would enable millions of people to live in a city free from the hazards of sand and dust. Despite having the same land area as the United States, which is approximately 9.6 million square kilometers, China's desert region spans over 1.2 million square kilometers, with a desert area of over 700,000 square kilometers. The country has reportedly lost over 280 million US dollars due to the increasing dryness of its land. Each year, the desert continues to expand, covering more than 3,000 square kilometers and has so far destroyed over 50,000 square kilometers of farmland, an area equivalent to that of a small to medium-sized country. This land is where two of the largest deserts in China meet, making it a particularly challenging task to control their spread. Tangier and Jaren Deserts On one side, the Tangier Desert keeps growing, and on the other, the Jaren Desert is very big. Both deserts have yellow sand. All life has died out because the desert keeps growing, so the only thing left for the people in the cities to do is to keep running away. Since there are signs that the two huge deserts might merge into one, the Chinese government decided in 1958 to build a big reservoir here. You might also be interested in where the water that is stored in the reservoir comes from. 
The reservoir primarily relies on the Sheriang River as its water source. This river flows through the Hoshi Corridor located in the Chilean Andes and is the third largest in the region. The Sheriang River is comprised of four distinct water sources. Surface water that enters the middle and upper parts of the river, spring water that flows underground and resurfaces at the northern edge of the Wei Basin, and mountain and spring water located in the upper reaches of the river. The latter has not been utilized for irrigation or has it mixed with the ground water or other receding water sources in the middle reaches, which include treated wastewater. The other issue is flooding during the flood season and the extension of the Jingdian Phase II project to transfer water to Minchin. With all of these issues in mind, one could wonder what the advantages of constructing a reservoir are. Advantages of Constructing a Reservoir The water storage facility features water transport tunnels, floodgates, and a unique spillway in the West Dam. It serves primarily for water storage and irrigation, but also has significant impacts on flood regulation, fishing, and tourism. The dam spans a length of 8,060 meters, stands at a height of 15 meters, and the reservoir covers an area of 25 square kilometers. The catchment area extends over 13,400 square kilometers, irrigating more than 900,000 mu of farmland and providing drinking water to 250,000 people in the surrounding region. Previously, the local population had to pay for food after the departure of farmers. However, since the reservoir's completion, their lives have improved with better access to water for growing crops. The fishing and tourism industries also received a boost, contributing to the area's overall economic growth. The reservoir's scenic beauty attracts many tourists between April and October, with the surrounding desert landscape reflecting in the clear waters, creating a stunning visual display. The water's surface shimmers with silvery light, and the green mountains, meadows, and sand dunes all blend together in harmony. The reservoir features natural swimming pools and excellent infrastructure and services, including yurts for relaxation and refreshments. Despite being in a desert, the reservoir demonstrates how China has made the seemingly impossible reality. In short, the water storage facility in the desert is an impressive feat of engineering that provides vital resources for the local population and boosts the area's economy. Its scenic beauty and tourist-friendly amenities further enhance the region's appeal, making it a must-visit destination for those exploring the wonders of China. At this point, you might be wondering if this reservoir was built in the desert or not, and if it was, what problems did you have to deal with when building it? Challenges faced during reservoir construction in 1958 in a desert environment. The construction of the reservoir in 1958 faced numerous challenges due to the limited technological advancements and high costs of food and clothing at the time. The location of the reservoir between the Tanya and Bat Aran deserts resulted in high temperatures and significant daily water evaporation, causing the reservoir area to shrink and potentially dry up during water shortages. Additionally, geological factors such as water sewage and silt buildup caused by strongs and winds posed serious problems. To combat this, Wheat grass and plants like Sanju jujube and red poplar were planted to prevent sand erosion and fix silt buildup. Despite these obstacles, the determined builders persisted in their efforts to construct the reservoir, realizing the importance of the land for future generations. The construction involved the building of 180,000 structures to keep sand in place, as well as altering the course of the Sheriang River to maximize water flow into the reservoir. However, this also led to a decline in the river's flow, resulting in the upper parts of the Shergiang River ceasing to flow within a year. Overall, the hard work of many generations of Chinese people contributed to the successful construction of the reservoir, 
albeit with some negative impacts on the ecological environment. This was all about today's video. See you soon in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, we would love to hear how much you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see more awesome videos like this in the future. Thank you.